Hi guys, it's Mats Abraham and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here in my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are into pharmacy or medical related videos. And for this video, we will be talking about the pharmacy board exam. So if you have already watched my part 1 and part 2 about the pharmacy board exam, you might be wondering, bakat na na namang video about it? So what gave me an idea to make this video is because some people reach out to me through Instagram or through Facebook so they try to ask me for advices kasi nga medyo malapit na yung board exam. It's two months away and I'm sure that a lot of you are having a hard time right now. And I would also like to give a special shout out to Faye Erica. So just days ago, I posted a poll in my Instagram stories asking people to ask me questions about the pharmacy board exam. So I would be answering some of them now in this video. But if you haven't watched my part 1 and 2 videos yet, I really advise you to watch them before this video. And also, I'm making this video to announce that I'll be having another giveaway. So dun sa part 2, nagbigay na ako ng giveaway for board takers. So if you want to hear about my answers to the different questions and also about the giveaway, then please keep watching. And it goes a little yeah. something like oh, I'll keep you warm all summer and after Paul, I'll keep you warm all summer and after So for the first question tips po on how to study PCOL effectively. So for me, ang technique dito sa PCOL or as with any subject is to be able to filter kung ano ang must know at yung hindi. Kasi relatively, I say relatively, hindi ko sinasabing ito talaga yung pinakamadali. Module 4 yung somehow pinakamadali or ito yung module usually na mataas yung mga tao. And why is that? Kasi usually yung mga basic concepts and yung mga must knows talaga yung tinatanong for this module. So again, ang technique dito is for you to print the end of the chapter tables ng Katzung. So, nandun yung mga classification, mechanism of action, adverse drug reactions, etc. So, dahil table siya, di mas madaling tandaan. Tsaka, doon na rin umikot yung questions dun sa mga important information na yun. And another way to study PCOL is to answer pack-up reviewers, yung mga mock exams and other drills. Tapos, dapat talaga lagi nire-rationalize mo yung answers. So, for me, practice talaga yung super duper duper important sa pagpe-prepare for the board exam. Second question, paano nyo po na-establish yung momentum nyo po? Ah, para sa akin, nag-start yata yung momentum ko mga 2 months before the board exam. So, kung magtitake kayo ng April, ngayong Feb yun. Back then, nung magtitake ako ng boards, it was actually the summer break between first year and second year med school. So, paano ko nga ba siya na-establish? So, 2 months before, dun ko nasabi sa sarili ko na, ops, tama na yung pabanjing-banjing. Kailangan mag-sacrifice ka na talaga. For me, kailangan talaga yung pinaka-wake up call mo every single day, every single minute, every single hour na nag-aaral ko for the board exam is the reminder na ang lapit na, kailangan ko na talaga mag-aaral. Tapos na-establish ko rin yung momentum ko noon by doing my schedule kasi although hindi ko siya super nasunod, at least yun yung naging reminder ko sa sarili ko na kailangan ko na talaga bilisan. So basically, kailangan talaga ng self-discipline. For a third question, test-taking techniques, I guess somehow na-share ko na to sa part 2 video ng board's preparation. But the important thing I want to tell you is to try not to overthink. Kaya sabi ko nga, ba naging effective sa akin noon yung copy ko at Biogesic. Kasi na-realize ko na kailangan super alert yung brain mo and dapat wala talagang distractions habang nagtitake ka ng exam. Para yung una mong naisip na sagot, most likely yun yung pumapasok sa utak mo kasi yun yung nakalungkat ng brain mo from all the things that you've studied before. And I also advise na once mo lang sana balikan yung sagot. After nun, wag na kasi baka mamali ka lang lalo kapag nagpalit ka pa ng sagot. And sa mga Mars types, yun yung mga hardest for me eh. And in our time, marami nun sa module 5. So pag ganun, you have to read each word carefully kasi a single word can make the statement wrong agad. And dito sa Mars type questions, try na din siya basahin ng mabilis kasi nakakaubos talaga ng time magbasa kasi super haba ng mga statement. And lastly, syempre, as I always emphasize in my first two videos, idasal mo rin na tama yung mga mapipili mong sagot. Alam na yung mga hinuhulaan mo. Habang nga exam ka, just also make it a form of prayer na kapag alam mo yung sagot, sabi mo, Lord, thank you. Pag di mo alam, Lord, help. In that way, you feel guided all throughout your exam. For the fourth question, memorization tips. So for me, repetition is key talaga. Syempre, super info overload talaga. Dito sa farm, talagang puro memory memorize, ba? Tapos sa sales advice, it is also very useful to use sticky notes or yung mga flashcards. And then one effective way for me na pag-memorize para hindi ma-overload is by composing a song. By composing a song. Huh? 
Kahit simple tunes lang yan ng mga ABC na B-I-N-G-O, okay na yun. Kasi yung mga ginawan ko ng ganong before, hanggang ngayon parang sila yung mga naaalala ko pa. So, mas na-store sila sa long-term memory. Kasi ang problem ko naman sa mnemonics is sometimes super dami ko ng mnemonics na nakalimutan ko na mismo yung mga mnemonics ko. What more yung meaning ng mnemonics, di ba? So, aside from making a saw, kapag gusto mag-memories, gawan mo rin ng story. So, be creative when making a story. So, eh, pwede mo incorporate yung friends mo, incorporate mo yung sarili mo, love life mo, or mga hugot mo. Basta, a way for you to remember. It. Fifth question, tips on online note-taking and marami po ba lumabas from the manner comprehend this? For note-taking, advice ko dito is always to focus more on the content tsaka masi a lot mo yung time na mabasa mo yung mismong notes, mabalikan mo na paulit-ulit kaysa yung aesthetic part. So kaysa yung ililipat mo, i-rewrite mo, spend more time sa pag-aral ng actual content ng notes. Regarding naman the comprehend the drills, well, hindi ko directly ma-recall noon if super same lang yung questions. But what I can say is super naging helpful talaga sila. Especially yung mga rationales sa bawat exam. Next question, nagka-curve po ba ang BOP sa result po ng boards? Ito hindi ko sure kasi I think wala naman officially sinabi about this. But what most people say is parang oo raw. So if ganun, edi factor din yung mga grades ng mga makakasabay mo mag-exam. The next two questions are about time management. So aside from making the schedule, the keys in managing your time are self-discipline at consistency. Because sure, it's very normal that we distract and we get tired. But you always have to motivate yourself to keep going. And sa pagmanage ng time mo, kailangan tanggap mo na talaga sa sarili mo na kailangan marami kang sacrifices na gawin para dito. So kung nila dati, lagi kang sanay na manood ng kaydrama, maglaro ng computer games. Pag malapit na yung bars, kailangan lang talaga tanggapin sa sarili na kailangan munang i-give up itong mga to. And then of course, it happens na hindi nasusunod yung schedule, di ba? Pero kapag ganun, you should not be disheartened. And ako, na-experience ko din talaga yun. Because in time management, it is also very important to accept and be aware of our limitations. Siyempre, tao lang din tayo. Aww. Tapos, in time management or in making your schedule, you should always, always, always be detailed. Kasi mas maging effective yun dahil meron ka talagang time allotment even in the smallest things you have to do for the day. Like yung oras nakakain ka, matutulog ka, gising ka, so lahat yun, inunote mo sa schedule mo. Next question, do you study anatomy and visual sa college sa UST? Yes, in Pharma and USC and I think also in other schools, we have anafi as our subject. So, combined na yung anatomy and physiology. Pero yung kinocover dun is talagang yung mga basics lang, hindi katulad ng mga ibang courses. Next question, okay lang ba na isang set of reviewers lang ginagamit na hindi iba-ibang version tsaka pako? Yes, definitely. I highly suggest this way of studying. Kasi sa totoo lang, kapag super dami mo makuha references, malito ka lang. And then, hindi mo lang magagamit mo information kasi magkakaiba yung binabasa mo. So, pati sa references, dapat you stick to one. Pero if you think na medyo low yield talaga yung reference mo, hindi ka kampante dun, it's alright to check other references. But, what I suggest is you master or yung pinaka- main foundation mo for the preparation yung inaaral mo should be just one main reference. Next question, what to focus for each modules po? For this, I won't expound on it kasi na-mention natin more or less na sa part 1 video ng words preparation. But what I must say is that yung reviewers na meron kayo ngayon, kung ano yung content niyan, yan na mainly yung dapat yung i-focus. Kasi kaya nga nila, kinuha yung mga important from the books, from your notes into the words reviewers is because ito yung kailangan talagang baon yung pagdating ng board exam. So, i-master nyo na lang yan. Next question, ano pong module ang inuna mo sa pag-review? Inuna ko dito yung module 3 kasi it requires the least memorization. And you can also check the more detailed schedule that I did kung ano yung mga modules ng pagkakasunod ko dun sa part 1 ng video. But I'll also link it again here below. Next question is about using Loret as a reference for the board exam. So personally, hindi ko ito ginamit and ang naging references ko talaga would be the board reviewers, reviewers from the manner lectures. Yung exams nila and then some exams from college pa and of course, yung pa ako. Next question, marami bang calculations and mahirap pa? Well, sa module 3, yes, medyo marami siya. Sa module 4 and 5, I think meron din yatang ilan. Pero in terms of the difficulty, it was actually quite better than expected. Di ko naman sinabing sisiw lang yung calc part, pero it's more manageable as compared to yung mga mock exams na na-take natin dun sa preparation or dun sa mga practice exams. So, kaya naman siya, huwag kayo matakal kapag may calculations. Basta gamitin nyo yung calculator nyo, tsaka madederive nyo naman yung formula, usually based sa unit. So, more questions. How did you maximize your license po? A very good question. So, ito, parang never pa yata ito natanong sa akin. So, maganda to kasi pinoproject mo na yung after ng board exam. Well, for me, since I went to med school, hindi ko siya sobrang na-maximize in the practice as a pharmacist. Kasi hindi ako nakapag-work as a pharmacist talaga in any field. But siguro, the way by which I maximized it 
is by teaching. So after coming boards and after I got my license, that it's what gave me the opportunity to teach. But I'm hopeful na magagamit ko pa tong license ko in the future, especially as I specialize. Next question, so two questions to, what are the important modules na need to tukan and what is the most difficult module during the board exam? Sa module na need to tukan for me, yun yung module 1. Why? Kasi nga, pag break down mo talaga yung percentage, pinakamarami sa module 1 kasi that is 20%. So pag matas ka dito, tatas yung board's grade mo. Kapag mababa ka dito, medyo malaking hatak din siya pababa. And then yung most difficult module naman for me, it was actually module 5 and 6, pero more of module 5. Kasi yun yung puro more step na questions. Ayaw ka talaga ng ganong questions kasi ang haba-haba ng binabasa mo. Tapos alam mo naman yung ibang choices, pero dahil hindi mo sure yung isa, mamamani ka na sa lahat. And yung module na to, medyo yung nagpahirap talaga dun was the man of part. So, medyo yun yung kailangan yung i-focus. Next question, does reading pharma books help in the preparation for boards, if time permits? I like that question kasi parang ito yung laging dilemma natin na helpful ba na nagbabasa ng books kasi dun din kumukuha yung lecturers. For me, personally, I don't advise this as a way to prepare for the board exams regardless if malapit na or malayo pa yung boards. Most especially pag ilang weeks or months away ka na lang from the board exam. Kasi remember, sobrang laki ng scope ng boards so instead of focusing on one specific chapter or yung mismong book lang or topic na yun, why not spread your time na madaanan mo lahat tapos mabalikan mo pa, ba? Para hindi ka rin sobrang may info overload pag nag-book ka. But if ever, siguro magiging useful yung books dun sa mga end chapter questions kasi sometimes they say na dun daw pwedeng kumuha yung mga board examiners ng question. Next question, paano po if nagkamili ka pero na-shade mo na ng maigi yung box? Okay, so for this question, um, mahirap magkamali sa boards. Bukod sa magkamali ng sagot, mahirap magkamali ng shade. Kasi di ba scantron to? So ako pag ganun, it depends. What I do or what I did or what I would do is, scenario 1, if sure ako na mali naman yung sagot na na-shade ko, as in careless lang talaga, na-shade ko lang siya talaga, pero alam ko na iba talaga yung tamang sagot, edi i-erase ko na lang yung una kong na-shade kasi alam ko rin naman na mali siya para itatake ko na yung chance na makatama. Kunyari, nabasa niya to kasi bawal para i sure, edi mali ka na talaga. Pero at least rinay mo na itama. Kasi if it happens na nabasa naman ng scantron yung second answer mo, at least sure ka na tama to, ba? Edi one point ka na dun. Pero if di ka naman sure if tama or mali yung una mong in-answer, edi pa rin hindi mo na i-risk ng palitan kasi baka mamali ka pa. Kayong pala talaga yung tamang sagot. So, huwag ka na nang mag-erase. So basically, pag ganun, it's a matter of weighing the risk and be talaga siya sa certainty mo sa sagot mo. And for the last question that I'd be answering for this Q&A, need po ba i-memorize yung scientific names? Yes, you need to memorize them, pero yung mga common ones lang, especially sa PICO. May natunong sa amin noon sa PICO, eh. I think mga three items lang ng scientific names. So, very minimal lang talaga. So, to answer that question na i-memorize pa o hindi, I advise you to memorize. But I don't advise you to spend so much time on it kasi baka maubos na yung time mo memorize ng scientific names tapos magkakaroon ka na ng less time for the other topics. So, basta memorize mo na yung mas common ng mga scientific names, okay na yun. Now, for the mechanics of my giveaway, I will be giving five board exam takers for the upcoming board exam, five board exam kits. So, ano yung maging laman itong kits na to? So, it would contain yung clear envelopes na kailangan nyo, yung sharpened pencil, sharpener, yung eraser, yung markers, pati yung mga in-advise ko na magdala kayo ng copy ko, ng paracetamol, ng snack, and even prayer cards, rosaries, special notes from me, and of course, may essentials din tayo dito. I will be giving you a mask case and an alcohol spray with your name on it na meron na nakalagay ng RPH kasi syempre, I want you to claim it. And of course, aside from this kit, I would prefer all the board exam things. So how to join this giveaway, you just have to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And also, please share this video in your Facebook account and just tag me at Mads Space Abraham. And I will draw the names of the 5 winners in my IG stories two weeks before the actual board exam date. So around that time ko rin siya ipapadala sa inyo para talagang malapit na siya sa board exam nyo. So that would be my giveaway and that is it for this video and I hope that you find it helpful. And don't forget to comment down below if you have more suggestions for my upcoming vlogs. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel.